I want to talk a little bit more about this issue of ensoulment, because as I mentioned in a previous video, there are some who will claim that the Catholic Church has not always been consistent in our teaching that life begins at conception, because there are, you know, certain medieval theologians, St. Thomas Aquinas' name gets brought up a lot, that thought that life might not begin until something called quickening, right, when uh, the child can first be felt to be, to be moving in the mother's womb, maybe that's when life began. Uh, and I commented in the earlier video that, you know, this was not ever formal teaching of the church. It was theological opinion uh, that just derived from the fact that we really didn't have a way of looking into the womb um, and our knowledge of embryology was very limited. And so these were just people speculating about maybe when, when the soul entered the body. But even those who, um, who were speculating such never used that speculation to advocate that it would be permissible to kill a child in the early stages of, of pregnancy. The church's teaching against abortion has always been consistent. Uh, but I wanted to go back and, and talk about that ensoulment issue again uh, and just give a little bit more detail as to why that matters um, and, and what it means for us. So our understanding of, of what a soul is, um, without getting into too much philosophical language about it, is the soul is the life force of the body. It's essentially what makes us alive. And the Catholic Church um, believes that not just human beings have souls, but every living creature has a soul. And this isn't a uniquely Catholic thought either. Uh, the pagan Greek philosophers um, were of the same opinion, that everything that's living has a soul. That means plants have souls and animals have souls and of course human beings have souls. Now we don't all have the same kind of soul, right? Everything has a soul that's proper to its, its kind. So animals have vegetative souls um, and animals have, have uh, sensitive souls, meaning they can sense and interact with their environment a little bit more. Uh, human beings are said to have rational you know, souls. We can, we can think, we have free will. Um, so everything has a different type of soul, but everything that's living has some kind of a soul, and that's what makes it alive. Um, so if you, if you want to kind of exit the realm of philosophy and just, you know, in metaphysics and just talk about this in terms of, um, you know, natural sciences um, and in the physical world, what's the difference between something living and something not living? Right? There's clearly something different between a tree and um, a, a granite boulder. There is a difference between, um, you know, a cat and this patch of dirt right here, right? There's a difference between a human being, a living human being, and, and a corpse, a deceased human being. Um, and what that difference is, what makes something alive versus not alive, is, is what we call uh, a soul. So for these medieval theologians who are arguing about, well, when does ensoulment take place? What they're really talking about is, well, when does life begin? Because they understood that the physical matter that, that goes into creating a human person comes from the mother and the father, that it's somehow supplied by them, but that that immaterial soul, the thing that actually gives life to, to that child in the womb, comes directly from God because God you know, directly creates that immaterial spiritual soul. Um, and that's what gives that child life. So that's what they're really talking about is when does life begin? And like I said, they didn't have, you know, uh, ultrasounds or any way of looking into the womb. And so there was a lot of speculation going on. Well, now we do, right? Now we do have a way of looking into the womb and, and science has shown us that there's always life there, right? From the time of conception, you have a living, growing, developing organism. There is never a moment when a, um, a, a an inanimate lump of cells becomes animate and starts growing. There's always growth. So that question of when does life begin has been scientifically answered for us, right? The life begins at the beginning, at conception. The very word means the beginning. Uh, so if we think about that in terms of ensoulment, that tells us because the soul is the life force of the body, that, that answers that question of ensoulment right there. That ensoulment must also happen at conception because the soul is what gives life to the body. If the soul was not present there in the body, you would not see that growth. You would not see that development. What you would see is, is instead what you see at the other end of life after a person's died, you see decay and breakdown. And that's manifestly not what's going on you know, in the womb. So is the child alive? Of course the child is alive. And that means the child has a soul. That means the child has a soul. That question of ensoulment, it's not an open question anymore. It's been answered for us uh, largely because of the scientific advancements that we've that we've made in the last hundred years.